It's the next year on podtech.net. Matt Kelly here again at the GM Heritage Center with Greg Wallace, manager of the center. Greg, a trip to the Heritage Center would not be complete without us talking about the Corvette. Absolutely. This is a, a beautiful version of the 1960 Corvette. Uh, Corvette started out in 1953 as uh, uh, GM's first fiberglass body car and America's first uh, sports car. Uh, the Corvette evolved throughout the years uh, up to uh, 1960 here to include uh, quad headlamps, uh, very stylized uh, uh, toothed grille, and, and moreover than that, the car became more and more civilized uh, as time went on, roll-up windows, uh, uh, power brakes and power steering, and uh, more creature comforts that uh, uh, the, the sports car enthusiasts wanted. And Greg, the 1960 Corvette is such an icon in American movie and television as well. Absolutely. Anybody that uh, watched the uh, series Route 66 will recognize this body style of Corvette. It was mainly the star of the show, so yeah. uh, there's a lot of shots when you go back and look at the old Route 66 uh, uh, films, uh, uh, you see a lot of shots of the Corvette. It was the star. And I think I have this vehicle in my own personal model collection. Absolutely. Uh, the Corvettes are one of the most uh, uh, replicated uh, for the die-cast model industry out there. And Greg, as we move down the line, we come to another Corvette icon, the 1963 split windshield. Absolutely. By uh, many people's account, this is the most popular Corvette of all time. Uh, the 63 Corvette was an all-new all body style, featured uh, hidden headlamps. It featured the very uh, sought-after uh, body coupe body style with the split down the middle, and it's very aerodynamic looking. Um, the car also uh, uh, features uh, independent front and rear suspension, which was also a first for uh, Corvette. And uh, the 63 through 67 mid-year Corvettes today are the ones that fetch the most money in uh, collector car world and are the most popular among the uh, Corvette enthusiasts. And Greg, the Heritage Center is fortunate not to have just one of these split windshield Corvettes, but actually two. Yeah, we are very fortunate. The uh, silver one that we just uh, looked at is a uh, base model Corvette with the uh, uh, smaller 250 horsepower engine and this is the uh, uh, the, the uh, top of the line uh, uh, engine option with the fuel injection 327 uh, 360 horsepower. This one also features the knockoff wheels and uh, a few more options that the other one does not have. Well Greg now that you've popped the hood of this absolutely beautiful Corvette let's take a look at this engine. Yeah, it's a 327 cubic inch uh, features the uh, uh, fuel injection uh, that Corvette was so popular for and as you can see, it's a, it's a very handsome styled motor with the uh, aluminum valve covers and, and aluminum plenum work on uh, the engine. So it's, it's, uh, it's every bit as styled and, and pleasing to look at as the exterior of the car. My only one disappointment is that we actually don't get to get into the vehicle and go for a ride and drive. Yeah, the, the whole experience isn't complete until you get a chance to feel the power and drive one of these uh, magnificent automobiles. Do they actually get out onto the road or are they pretty much in here for posterity? Uh, everything in here is uh, maintained and, and kept in running order and on occasion we do get out and drive them. That's the best part of my job. Mm. Uh, so we have a, a, a great uh, organization which uh, keeps these cars uh, uh, maintained and uh, restored and, and in tip-top shape. Wonderful. Let's go now take a look at some other Corvettes. And Greg, a discussion about Corvette wouldn't be complete without including the Mako Shark concept. Absolutely. It's, it's the first of the Corvette concept cars, and it inspired the uh, 63 through 67 mid-year Corvettes. What's interesting, other than the overall same styling cues, is that this car is much longer and much wider than the 63 through 67 Corvette that uh, was inspired by this car. And it's definitely got this menacing feel to it. Definitely a shark-like concept of, you know, trolling the depths and then coming up from behind and uh, striking. Absolutely. A uh, popular story goes that Bill Mitchell was on a fishing expedition, uh, pulled out a Mako shark, and was so struck by its overall design and uh, coloring that it inspired these cars. Uh, one of the more interesting stories that's told about Bill Mitchell is, is that uh, he wanted the paint job to be just right. And he had this game fish on the wall of his office. Uh, he kept telling his painters, I want you to make the car look like the game fish. Uh, he kept looking at it, he didn't like the way it looked. Uh, so finally, they waited for Bill Mitchell to go out of town. They pulled the game fish down off the wall, repainted it to look like the car, and he was happy then. Oh, that's a great story. Well, as we continue down the line here, another concept vehicle for Corvette was the Manta Ray. Here we have the 65 Manta Ray, and it, and it was a styling uh, uh, exercise that would show the next evolution of the Corvette, the uh, 68 through 82. 
and as you can see it's got the high brow, uh, high arch front fenders, very low silhouette uh, and it's just a unique uh, customized uh, concept vehicle for Chevrolet. And Greg, as we take our trip down memory lane for Corvette and concept cars at that, we come to the Aerovet. Absolutely, this is a 73 Aerovet. Uh, this car started out life as a, a concept Corvette. This uh, car has seen many iterations over the years from a, a rotary power to what it has in it today is a V8 power. It's a mid-engine Corvette. Uh, while it never made production, it is a very unique test bed for things that uh, might come along in the future. Who knows? And that's what uh, the tease is for me about these concept vehicles, is that they show us what is possible, but they never really come to fruition. It's sort of a tease. Absolutely. And, and if you look at this car, it's got styling cues on newer Corvettes. The wheels, for example, are very uh, reminiscent of the production wheels that came on uh, uh, mid-'70s Corvettes. And, and, and the uh, hidden headlamps as well, and the Endura bumper, which... Uh, uh, made uh, its way onto Corvettes uh, in the 70s as well. Well, Greg, let's continue our trip down memory lane here as we take a look at some of these awesome Corvettes. The Heritage Center has a very diverse collection of Corvettes from production Corvettes, pace car Corvettes. Uh, here we have a concept vehicle that was done uh, in the 90s on the Corvette. Uh, here we have a 60s, uh, or started out in the 60s but progressed up through the 70s uh, Corvette uh, development vehicle. Here is the only vehicle in our collection that doesn't run, and it is a resin uh, composite model of what they call Corvette Indy. Here we have development vehicle, which is a twin turbocharged uh, Corvette. While it looks like a production-based Corvette, uh, it has twin turbocharged engines. It's an absolutely stunning vehicle. Again, sad that it never actually made it into production, but you can see it here at the Heritage Center through the next year on podtech.net. We also have some uh, cars that uh, GM hung on to over the years. Bill Mitchell was one of the uh, uh, more flamboyant and colorful uh, designers of, uh, of GM history. And, and this was his uh, car that he did for his wife. And uh, features pearlescent paint in 1973 when that wasn't common. And a very unique interior. Uh, it was said that uh, the interior was done from a swatch of a of a material that uh, Bill Mitchell's wife Mary Ann had made into a dress, so it matched. Uh, Bill Mitchell over the years did a series of cars that matched suits that he owned, and uh, we've got uh, uh, photographs of him standing next to different cars with uh, suits that matched the cars. Well, let's uh, wrap up our uh, trip down memory lane here with a look at our final two vehicles in the Corvette lineup. Here we have a ZR1. Uh, it's one of the few purple ones. The ZR1 was a uh, 400 horsepower LT5 engine. Uh, which was a four valve per cylinder, very unique car, very collectible today, um, and uh, very unique. This is another concept vehicle, and you can see the design cue behind this uh, uh, Aerovet is, uh, is top speed, so it's uh, done very much like a, a Bonneville uh, Salt Flats racer uh, with its uh, disc wheels, very low silhouette, uh, very aerodynamic. It's very easy to see why Corvette is an icon in the automotive industry just looking at this collection. Absolutely, and I mean, uh, we inspire people. Uh, the designers come in here. Uh, those that are responsible for the design of the cars uh, come in and look at the family heritage of the Corvette. And it's pretty easy to see when you look down this row of cars where that started. Greg Wallace, what a pleasure taking us uh, for a trip down memory lane on the uh, Corvette here at the GM Heritage Center. I'm Matt Kelly for the next year on podtech.net.